when you talk about um, the law banning FGM in the Gambia, Gamco Trap was at the forefront to make sure that this law came into effect. Gamco Trap has been able to train and sensitize a lot of women circumcisers who we are able to throw in their knives and stop the act, acts of circumcising girls in this country. Even amongst us here, we had some ex-circumcisers who have been empowered, like the likes of Fatu Bojang. She was an ex-circumciser, Fatu Bojang. But because of the training she got from Gamco Trap, she was able to stop and quit the action of circumcision, circumcising girls. And today she's been empowered to advocate for the rights of girls and women. Also by her side is Fatu Saho. Fatu was a victim herself. And she's here today to empower other girls and make sure that that action stops. As we all are accelerating to zero tolerance by 2030, we all are here, working in the whole region of the country to ensure that FGM becomes a thing of the past. And when we talk about FGM, we are talking about mothers. We are talking about our girl children. So when we impact and train and sensitize the mothers to know the implications on denying their children from the God-given rights, the inherent rights they have, by taking away some part of their body, we help the parents to stop that act. And um, I would like to allow my colleagues, the child rights advocate, she will tell us the implications, the health implications of FGM and child rights violation, which we have been sensitizing people. And when we talk about PAPEV too, PAPEV is, is about children's rights. Gamco Trap is in the forefront too on advocacy, advocating teachers, parents, communities, children themselves, using the CRC to help them understand their own rights. Because um, if you know your rights, you will not allow anybody to take it away from you because nobody has the right to abuse or violate another person's right. So on this note, I will not want to take much of our time. Uh, Gamco Trap is mainly interested in anything that viol violates the right of women and the right of children. And we have a lot of traditional harmful practices like the acronym uh, depicts. And these things infringe on their fundamental rights and their human rights. So what we do is we try as much as possible to protect those rights. And how do we do that? We do that through sensitizing people because people have to be aware first. And you know, children are vulnerable in the sense that children can make decisions for themselves. So the people who, the, the people who have the power vested upon them to make those decisions, at the end of the day, abuse it because they, you could link it to ignorance, though, but ignorance alone is not an excuse. So we try as much as possible to bring in those people, which are the guardians, the parents, the teachers, the societal leaders, the, the people in the society who have been abusing, have taken advantage, and still have the opportunity to abuse those rights. So we try to be inclusive in everything we do. We fight, like she said, for the rights of uh, their, their sexual and reproductive rights, which is uh, FGM-based child marriage, which is forced and early, because a child isn't supposed to marry. That's why we, we just remove the force, because a child isn't supposed to be married. So when that is taking place, we, we, we also look at cases where children's rights are being, because we have uh, this intercollaboration with different sectors, and we deal with children on the move. We also deal with children who are being trafficked and others. We try to offer, we have an open door policy that offers uh, psychosocial support, and uh, here serves as a body that can protect a child. We could push for a legal 
legal case for a child who is being abused, we, we, we go to the point that sometimes it's a bit difficult though, but we push it's a tussle between Gamco Trap and the child's parents. Because anywhere a child's right is being violated, that's where we stand in. And it doesn't necessarily limit us to just uh, uh, the SGBV or the, uh, gen uh, the FGM or alien forced marriage. It goes to any way a, ch a child's right is being violated, be it the fundamental, the human, the sexual reproductive, uh, the psychological right. Uh, of a child, any violation of a child's right. That's what we practically tackle. Another way we do this is by popularizing the legal instruments and the acts that have been ratif ratified. She talked about the CRC and various other FGM acts. The, lately we've been talking about the Maputo Protocol, which is basically on women's rights. But we see that women, children, girl, child, uh, girl children end up becoming women. So if we can protect the right of a girl child, then uh, we know that a woman is going to be protected eventually. That's why we try to push, we, we push these acts. We make sure that it's being known from the grassroots. We try to touch the grassroots as much as possible. We have a collaboration with the Ministry of Education. So all these, uh, all these acts and all these laws could be inclusive in the curriculum of children and in the curriculum of teachers. So nobody will be like they are not aware or they don't know what's going on. So this is how inclusive we are. And lately we've been strongly advocating to popularize these legal instruments. Because when these legal instruments are popularized, then most things that have been looked at as normal will be seen as a crime. And if it's a crime, it has to be prosecuted. And the perpetrator of those crimes will have to face justice for what they've done. So that's practically what Gamco Trap has been all about for over three decades. And that's what we are trying to keep pushing till a decade, which is the next decade, that's by 2030, where we'll be able to say, okay, we've reached, we are proud that we've achieved this. And that's why we're pushing for good enough. This week is the zero tolerance of uh, FGM on women and children. So good enough, we are looking at a next decade where there'll be no, it will be a, a, a success story. It will be the story that's been told. Like people tell stories of things that happened in the past and bad practices that went on in the past, like killing of twins, human sacrifice, and other things. But those things are sacrilegious now because they've been abolished. So we're looking at the Gamco trap that pushes, the way we push for the legislation of the FGM Act in the Gambia to be ratified and for it to be banned. So we're looking for a, a, a next decade where Gamco Trap is one of the bodies that pushes for the zero tolerance or abandonment to most harmful practice, practices that infringe on the rights of children and the girl child. Thank you very much for welcoming us. Uh, as a delegation, we're meeting all the stakeholders and we are trying to see uh, which are the challenges you are addressing, uh, the child protection and um, uh, for all the vulnerable children in Gambia and see how we can create synergies and exchange uh, like pra best practices also uh, between actors. Uh, in order to, to address and to um, reach the results for the project. Uh, so as you know, it's a regional project uh, in six countries, including Gambia. Uh, and um, I would like to hear more about you and about your, your role in the project and uh, if you have any, anything that you think should be addressed as the most urgent uh, challenger uh, in the project. As you know, we are really um, uh, we are really focused on the ownership of the project to local governments, and uh, so this is definitely uh, one of our m most important concern: uh, the ownership in order to be completely in line with national policies, and um, and as you know. Uh, as you were saying, uh, PAPEF is really um, focused on both community uh, engagement and sensibilization and as well institutional engagement and advocacy. So um, it is very important for us uh, that there, has, uh, there are two 
main level of addressing the different um, challenges concerning child promotion uh, rights. Uh, I'm the principal program officer gender at the ECOWAS uh, Gender Development Center based in Dakar. Uh, the ECOWAS Gender Development Center is the regional agency of ECOWAS in charge of implementing the gender policy in the 15 ECOWAS member countries. And I think it's uh, this reason that uh, enable us to be part of this project. We got a grant from uh, the Italian cooperation through UN HR office, WAPO, in Dakar, to implement the regional dimension of the PAPEF project. Uh, I would like to congratulate you with the great job you're doing uh, in fighting uh, FGM, all what is related to gender-based violence. This is really uh, what ECOWAS is expecting from what is like yours. And for, this, uh, for the implementation of this project, I think you have a very key role. Because this uh, PAPEV is uh, for child protection, but also the gender dimension is very important for us to implement. Uh, we are tar targeting children on the move. But children on the move, it doesn't mean only boys. These issues that uh, girls are facing, like uh, early marriage, uh, forced marriage, FGM, teenage pregnancy, all those issues will be also uh, tackled uh, in the implementation of the PAPEF project. Um, and it's maybe time to congratulate Mary for having identified the right actors to be part of the steering committee. The steering committee in the implementation of the PAPEF project is very important because you will have to validate the action plan that uh, we will map out with Mari for the Gambia. We have the regional dimension, it's true, but we are working directly with uh, national coordinators on three main activities. The first one will be a pilot project, uh, including the five among the six member countries beneficiaries. Uh, it means uh, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea-Mali, Senegal, and the Gambia. The pilot project will work on the integration of children on the move. Uh, the integration will be done at the national and transnational level. We will also rehabilitate shelters in those countries and the rehabilitation will be uh, uh, based on equipping them, equipment, but also capacity building. We will do training. And uh, as you said, we need, when you are reflecting on uh, children, we need to link it to women. This is because it is the same case. If uh, women are suffering, children also can suffer. And if children is suffering, women are affected by this situation. It means that uh, we can find a connection with what we are doing and see how we can work together at the grassroots level. Because this project is a practical project. It's not just to come to talk to, but it is to see how we can transform the life of the population. And we have only 30 months. It's a little bit short because there are a lot of expectations here in the Gambia and in the other country, and we are looking for your support to see how we can uh, implement well the project here. As she said, we are not implementing actors. We are just giving the guidelines so that we can do it with, the, with Mary. Mary is coordinating. And uh, the other partner here, Women's Bureau, we have many other partners here in the Gambia. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.